This video is designed to familiarize you with our policies, procedures, and our curriculum. Putting a team reward system into use in the classroom. Begin with making your expectations clear. This means making simple rules that will be enforced at all times. Here is a list of simple rules that work well. Number one, raise your hand if you want to speak in class. Number two, do not yell in the classroom. Number three, speak only English in the classroom. Number four, no food toys, or cell phones in class. Number five, nothing on your desk but what the teacher has asked for you to take out. Number six, Korean style, students stand up when responding. Make your own class rules, but don't make too many. A list of 27 rules is difficult for anyone to follow, especially children. Display the rules in the front of the class and review them with your students. Next, Create a chart of the names of the students in your class. This chart can be on a large paper or poster board or even just written on the whiteboard at the beginning of each class as attendance is taken. This chart can be created and managed in many different ways. The important thing is for students to be able to see the chart at all time to monitor their progress and the progress of their friends. Sometimes it helps to make a specific time during the class to add or take away points from students, such as during the transition from review to the main lesson, or between the lesson and a skills game. Then, create a seating chart that will separate students who have a tendency to misbehave when seated near each other. Allow students to sit wherever they choose for the first three days of class. This will give you time to get to know the students well and decide where to place them. If you have very few problems, then perhaps you will want to create teams based on where students want to sit and who they want their teammates to be. Often, this is not the case. Then you need to think creatively and begin to pair students up with a partner that they will not completely love or hate. And this all depends on how many students you have in the class as well as how many boys and girls make up your class. Perhaps you want to consider gender and put every boy next to a girl. This seating chart does not have to be permanent. Make alterations as you see fit. You may find that the first few days using a point system are very challenging. Students may be upset to have to change their seat or to follow a new set of rules that they are not accustomed to. Try to make these first few classes especially fun for them. Students will quickly adapt to the new system once they see it used and begin to understand what is expected of them. Now. Allow each team to choose a team name. Put the two team names on the whiteboard before each class and begin by giving each team a few points for how well they are seated and ready to begin the lesson. As the class progresses, award points for correct answers and subtract points from teams with students who are not following the rules that you have laid down. Be sure to always tell students why their team has lost a point. When students yell an answer out, Tell them they are correct, but that they lose a point for yelling out. When you notice a student playing with a toy or chewing gum, let the team know that they have lost a point because one of the team members has not followed the rules. Rewards. 
As for the ultimate reward given to the winning team or to individual students, be creative. You may want to spend a few thousand won and buy candy or snacks. You may want to designate a special class period as part of a class period when the winning team can play games or watch a movie. Each group of students is new, unique, and often what may be a great prize for one class is no fun at all to another class. Only you can determine by communicating with your students what is something that they will truly find rewarding. Be creative and you will find the reward they crave is in fact much simpler than you had imagined. Punishment. Using a point system is intended to, intended to be a form of positive reinforcement. If you find that any particular students are not responding to the system, speak to your manager or to your partner teacher about the students. Perhaps a phone call or a parent conference is necessary. Let students know in class that you will call their parents and tell them about the students' poor behavior. Korean children fear their parents, and usually just the threat of a phone call or of a parent-teacher meeting is often enough to get a student to comply with your wishes. Things you cannot do to punish a student. Number one, you cannot send kids to the principal's office. Number two, you cannot hit, smack, spank, or use any form of physical discipline. Number three, you cannot make a student leave your class. Things you can do to punish a student. Number one, you can tell your manager. It is the responsibility of your manager to counsel students and to communicate with parents. Number two, you can tell your partner teacher. Often the students will respond to their Korean teacher because they know that their Korean teacher communicates with their parents frequently. Number three, you can confiscate items such as toys, food, or cell phones. Be sure to return them to the student at the end of the class. Number four, you can make a student your personal assistant or give them a special job. Give them a job that makes them feel like they are getting the attention they crave. This is another example of positive reinforcement. The most important factor in managing a class is good lesson planning. If the pace and the activities in your lesson are level and age appropriate, the students will be stimulated and they will enjoy your class. A well-planned class will leave no time for disruptive behavior. A poorly planned class, on the other hand, will create an opportunity for students to talk and take focus away from your class. Be prepared. Students respect teachers who have put time and effort into their lessons. Learn the names of your students. This will let students know that they are a part of the class, making no one feel left out. Maintain the interest of all students. This makes sure that each student is somehow involved with the lesson so that no students feel bored or are given the opportunity to talk with their friends. Never leave the class unattended. This will only result in losing the children's attention and will take valuable classroom time to get back. Come to class prepared so that you do not have to leave once the lesson begins. Vary teaching approaches and activities. Always keep your lessons new and fresh, and this will keep students' interest and it will result in better comprehension of the lesson. Let your students know the consequences of bad behavior. Make sure you follow through with the punishment that you have set out for misbehavior, and if you have a student break th who breaks the rules. If you don't follow through, the students will take advantage of the rules as they will know that they won't get in trouble for their actions. Always face the classroom. It is important that the students know that you are aware of everything going on in the class. Kids will be kids, and sometimes their attention span is minimal at best, so make sure that they know that you are paying attention to their behavior. Have seating plans and change them if necessary. Most kids will want to sit with their friends, so let them, but warn them that they will be moved if they are disruptive. If you are having problems, change the seating arrangement. They will not be happy, but will most likely improve their behavior if they are allowed another chance to sit beside their friends again. Use positive reinforcement. Always reward correct answers and good behavior as it will increase the likelihood for further participation from your students. Smile. This might sound simple, but it goes a long way in the classroom as it does in life. Curriculum. The exact curriculum schedule for each individual school may vary due to different school schedules and class duration times. Please check with your partner for the exact schedule. 
This description of how to use the individual texts should help guide you through the process of creating lesson plans for each level. This guide is only for levels 1 through 4. As you look at the texts provided for each level, you will notice that the Herald texts follow a distinct pattern. Each class in levels 1, 2, 3, and 4 comes with a blue student book, an orange student workbook, a pink homework book, and a green word and grammar book. Your level 1 classes may also have a phonics book, and levels 2 through 4 will have two storybooks in a packet with the Herald Friends Reader workbook. Foreign teachers will only teach from the blue student books and the orange workbooks on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, foreign teachers will teach phonics to their level 1 classes and storybooks to their level 2, 3, and 4 classes. Korean teachers will only teach from the pink homework book and the green word and grammar book on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, Korean teachers will teach from the phonics books to their level 1 students and in the storybooks to their level 2, 3, and 4 students. This means that the only books that Korean teachers and foreign teachers share are phonics books in their level 1 classes and storybooks with the Friends Reader workbook. The Herald student book and workbook each contain 10 lessons. Lesson number 5 and lesson number 10 are review lessons that are longer than normal lessons. Each lesson will be taught in the span of one week except for lessons number 5 and 10. These review lessons will take about a week and a half to teach, and this will be done just before testing your students. Your midterm will be given after Lesson 5, and your final exam will come after Lesson 10. For teaching Lessons 1 through 4 and 6 through 9, please follow a very simple schedule. These books are only taught on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Each lesson is four pages in the student book and four pages in the workbook. On Monday, teach the first page in the student book and the first page in the workbook. These are the introduction pages. They include a conversation dialogue. And this is a good day to spend time practicing new vocabulary words and role modeling the practice conversation. On Wednesday, the next two pages in the student book are taught. Words to learn and practice and learn. Also, teach your corresponding two pages in your workbook. And on Fridays, you will teach the fourth and final pages of the lesson. This contains the read and learn section. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, you will teach phonics in your level one classes. Please confer with your partner teacher about which exact pages to teach. This book is taught by both the Korean teacher and the foreign teacher on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so communication with your partner is crucial. The storybooks for levels two, three, and four contain their own lesson schedule on the first page of the storybook workbook, the Herald Friends Reader book. The Korean teacher will always teach the first page of the workbook lesson with the vocabulary section. This includes a review of Korean words, so it must be taught by the Korean teacher. The second page is a reading comprehension review that is taught by the foreign teacher. Tips for teaching specific levels. Each level has its own unique set of challenges, as well as an appropriate teaching style. While the lower levels require a more hands-on approach with repetition and review of basic skills, the higher levels can be taught with a more conversational approach as they focus more on comprehension skills and classroom discussion. And as you begin to know your students better, you will be able to apply different techniques to each class and often to individual students. In some curriculum levels, you may find that students' skills vary widely within the same class. For example, some of your level 1 students will have a firm grasp of the alphabet and basic knowledge of phonics, while others may not. This can pose a particular challenge when a class with many students has a wide range of skill levels. These classes may require a bit more planning and patience, 
But often, in classes such as these, the students will progress much more quickly because of the basic nature of the material they are learning. It is important to remember that in all ESL classrooms, the focus should be more on student speaking and less on teacher speaking. Even with lower levels that may need more guidance and attention from a teacher, the emphasis should always be on getting the students to speak. Lower levels may need to listen and repeat words or phrases as guided by a teacher, but the upper levels should be able to learn to engage in classroom discussions and debates as guided by a teacher and eventually amongst themselves. Always set expectations at a high level. Students may not always meet the expectations, but will only work at a high level if the teacher sets the goals of the class very high. Remember, only the teacher can set the expectations for a class. Make your expectations known to your class so that there's no question about what you expect from your students. Remember to model in each lesson. Modeling is the difference between showing and saying. Many teachers merely try to say what they want students to do. You need to show them what to do. Level 1. The level one student can be among the most challenging and the most rewarding of the students that you will teach. Always remember that they are not only learning and using English for the first time, but also that this may be their first encounter with a foreigner. This demands that you nurture an atmosphere of understanding and praise in the classroom. Students at this age can be very shy and unsure of themselves. They need to know that their English class is a safe place where they can feel free to try things outside of their comfort zone. More importantly, they need to know that this is a place where they are allowed to get things wrong and to sound silly. Give them high fives. Correct them with praise and adoration. Be silly with them and let them see that you are not afraid to be silly as well. Most of all, make the learning environment fun. Kids have an amazing ability to recognize sympathy and empathy. Each unit in the textbook lends itself to a particular question. Find that question and make the material about your students. Ask them questions and teach them how to answer personal questions directed at them. Unit 1 is about names and introductions. Teach them to introduce themselves and teach them how to answer when someone asks, What's your name? Teach them the difference between first and last names in Western and in Korean society so that they can answer, My name is Sally or My name is Sally Kim. Make each unit into a question that is relevant to them and they will feel more comfortable listening and responding. Always remember that they are seven or eight years old and this is a new and often frightening experience for their first few days. Level 2. Level 2 students are emerging readers. This is the level at which students usually go from putting sounds together to make words to putting words together to make sentences. Teachers still need to model material for students and focus classes on getting students to read and speak aloud in class. They need to be independent readers by the time they reach level 3 because the focus will shift more towards grammar and learning grammatical structures. Level 2 students also need to perfect basic writing skills as the next level will require that students focus more on the substance of their writing and less on the mechanics of writing. Level 3 and Level 4. These two levels focus mainly on grammar. Each unit still has a vocabulary component, however the words are not practiced merely for memorization but in the context of grammatical exercises. It is crucial that teachers appropriately manage lesson time in these levels as there's a lot of material to cover. The storybooks are of a much higher level and usually make a switch from fiction in the lower levels to non-fiction in levels 3 and 4. The level 3 and 4 storybooks are related to science and social studies topics with more difficult vocabulary words. Level 5. Level 5's main focus is reading comprehension and listening skills. At this level, classroom conversations need to be much more student-involved. 
Try using classroom debates and speech presentations by students as a way to get students to speak more in the classroom and to improve their critical thinking skills. Level 5 students can vary in skill levels, which mean that you need to set expectation levels high once again. Let students know that they are expected to participate in each lesson. Dictation is a large part of the curriculum in Level 5, and it can be very frustrating for students at first. Model for them. Show them how you want them to approach dictation. Try to begin slowly and increase the pace of dictation as the term progresses. Remember that dictation is about using two skills, listening and writing, simultaneously, and it can be very difficult for beginners. Now, the very last thing we can do is, everybody. Watch me. No, sit down, please. Jimmy, please stop. Here, I will take this because you guys can't help but play with it all the time. Okay, so here's what I want to do now. I want to see if you remember from your speaking test. Min, sit down. Okay, please feel free to raise your hands if there are any questions, okay? Um, there are three kinds of, there are three different kinds of galaxies. Who remembers? What's the name of the galaxy that we live in? What's the name of our galaxy? Anybody? What is it? No, that's the shape of it. Brittany, what's the name of our galaxy? No? Ocean. No, not the shape of it. Spiral, irregular, elliptical. These are all shapes, but our galaxy has a name. Like, my name is Tim. What is it? Spiral. No, that's a shape. What is it? Good, it's the Milky Way, the name of our galaxy. They pass it, they pass it. Football, they start the game, right? And the game lasts maybe five seconds. They throw the ball and the game stops. And everyone has to stop. <laughs> yep. And everyone has to go back and get ready again. Football is like war. Two people, two sides line up. And the two sides have big, big men. And they have to hit each other very, very hard. And the, the quarterback, he has to throw the football. But it's very dangerous. In fact, do you know what? It's so dangerous to play American football that all football teams, they only play... Uh, 16 games in one year. That's it. Because by the end, they all have broken legs and broken arms and they're bleeding and they're hurt and they cannot, they're in hospitals. That's how bad it is. Okay? Very, very fast. They, they do it because, like all sports, I don't know about Korea, but they make millions of dollars a year. They're rich. If you are a football star in America, not soccer. We don't have soccer teams in America. We do, but nobody goes to them. I don't know why. There's no... Soccer is not on television in America. Do you know... Heisman? Ah, the football player. Football player Heisman? I don't know. Ah, uh, what I don't know. There are so many. There are, there are like 400 football players. <laughs> and there are, there are maybe about 20 or 30. What, 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 what? I don't know. What team do they play for? Do you know? Okay. Okay. Now, now there's a team in sports. Uh, okay, let's read. Ready? I'm going to read first. Basketball is one of the most popular sports in the world. And it is played in most countries. It is an ideal game. Because it doesn't discriminate between rich and poor. Some basketball players have become very, very rich from playing the game. And some people think that it's a very old game, but the kind of basketball that is played today is really quite new. Dr. James Nysmith invented basketball in the United States of America in 1891. How old is that? If it was made in 1891, and the year right now is 2011, well, here, nine years, nine years after 